All right, so so if you've been you've been bow hunting or shooting a bow for a long time, or you know people that have, you probably are somewhat familiar with with shoulder injuries in, in archery. Um, it's kind of the classic, you know, the classic thing. You know, a long time shooter just can't shoot anymore. Shoulder gets wrecked or have to have surgery and uh, then got to start shooting a crossbow or something. And we don't want that to happen. So, um, you know, in, in recent years, like there, there, there's been a lot learned about, about what causes those injuries and how to prevent them more importantly. So I'm here at Rocky Mountain Specialty Gear with Tom Klum, who is a, a USA Archery Level 4 instructor, um, a pretty you know, high elite level instructor in a system that's basically designed to prevent shoulder injuries. And, you know, I'd say there could be other injuries, but shoulder is going to be the most common injury you're going to see in an archer. And uh, so I'm going to have Tom kind of break down some of these different types of injuries that you'll see. And this applies to both compound and traditional, traditional bows. You know, you'll see certain types of, of injuries are more prevalent in, in traditional bows and some are more prevalent in compounds. And you know, traditional bows are, you know, and traditional archery is becoming more and more popular. And there's ways you can really screw up your shoulder. And a lot of people have over the years um, by shooting a traditional bow a certain way. I'm reluctant to say incorrect because you can, there's very accurate ways of shooting that can still just destroy your shoulder. So with that, I'm gonna have Tom, you know, talk about some of these different types of injuries, you know, your, your bow shoulder injuries and drawing shoulder injuries. So we'll try to give you, you know, we'll give you some background and we'll try to show you examples of thing, you know, things that will and won't hurt your shoulder in ways that hopefully you continue can continue, um, you know, bow hunting and shooting shooting bows for a lifetime. What I'm going to talk about first is an injury to the draw side shoulder. That's where you see most guys. I know, being an older guy now, I know a lot of people that cannot shoot a bow anymore. So let me back up a second here and talk about uh, a little archery form. Biggest loss of mi misses or biggest cause of misses a lot of time is any loss in string tension. Because loss in string tension is always a variable loss in string tension. It causes a lot of problems in archery. So typically at any high level of shooting a recurve bow in particular or a traditional bow is a shot that involves increasing string tension to a follow through. And here's the root of what causes a lot of problems. If we do things that are intuitive, if we haven't had training at a higher level that involved the subject of back tension, we're going to pull the bow in a direction that's intuitive. If I'm shooting that way, I'm going to pull the string that way. The problem is, is when I pull the string this way, first of all, I'm using shoulder muscles, a weaker muscle group as opposed to back muscles is that there's an end of range of movement in that direction. It's about right here. So you can all maybe anticipate where I'm going. So if we're pulling, increasing string tension through a break, we're gonna, pull, we're gonna increase string tension to a follow through that will slam to a stop right at that point. Now this is opposed to what the we call back tension where Literally, the direction of tension is this way. It's behind me. And that causes a rotational follow-through that does not cause an impingement. And it's a much more powerful shot, too. So I'm going to press tension behind me. I'm going to press my shoulder this way. I'm going to be pressing this way or this way. And what that causes is basically a shot when it breaks, when the string breaks through your fingers, we get rotation through a follow-through position. So you'll see that the follow-through position ends between my ear and end my shoulder. Whereas if I'm driving tension this way, I'm going to slam into an end of range of motion that's between my eye and, and my ear. It's about boom, right here. This is the devastating motion to an archer. What it does is it causes an impingement between the head of the humerus and something called the acromion process. All right, this here, representation of the right side shoulder blade and the clavicle. This is the head of a humerus, the head of the upper arm bone. This is the glenoid. That's where the humerus sits right in into that pocket right there. Not a lot supporting that joint. That's why a lot of this stuff is so important. 
this little bone that sticks out is a chromium process. And there's a gap in there between the head of the humerus and this little process, this little bone that sticks out from the scapula. So there are tendons running through there. Your bicep tendon runs through here. Supraspinatus runs through, attaches the front side. The specific impingement from slamming to a stop is this scapula closing this gap and slamming to a stop right here, just like this. And there's tissue in there, and that tissue is going to get inflamed. And something that your body does to inflammation is add calcium. So a lot of times we'll get a bone spur under this area right here. And then when you're in causing this impingement still, it goes from a sore shoulder to an injured shoulder because these bone spurs will start lacerating one of these tendons that run through there. Typically, the supraspinatus is the one that gets hit the most. The bicep tendon runs through this slot and goes through this gap too. So sometimes we'll even have a saggy bicep because the bicep tendon will get lacerated. So those are where that little gap right there is where this injury specifically comes from. I'm going to go ahead and talk about another motion that is detrimental to the rear shoulder again. So the other one is if I build a holding position, I have a high rear shoulder, I may drive up back tension, a good direction of tension, but what I'm going to get is a high rotation that can cause the same impingement between the head of the humerus and the acromion process that the slamming motion can cause. So if I have good direction of tension, but I shoot from a high shoulder position, I'm going to get a high rotation and that can cause some of the same impingement. Not as devastating as a slam to a stop, but still can be very detrimental with a high rotation. A shot actually looks like from the rear, and this is just from a direction of tension behind me, but the natural result will be a hand that stays right in line with the arrow, watch the hand, and an elbow that slashes. So if you're seeing shooting with good direction of tension and low level shoulders, what you'll get on the rear elbow is a slashing elbow with a linear hand. What we're going to show you first is actually drawing the bow correctly and show you how much air, um, Tyler is using his back to draw the bow even. So what you're going to see is you're going to see a big movement. His, his shoulder blade is about right here. But as you draw the bow, you're going to see a big scapular or shoulder blade retraction. These muscles here are the big muscle groups that we want to take the load of the bow and we're going to take it off of the strain, off of the shoulder. We don't want to strain these muscles. We want to put the strain in, in these big back muscles. That's why it's called back tension. So what we're going to point out is this big scapular movement during draw. So he sets it down here. Boom. Big movement. Strong. And a follow through. Big strong movement. Big powerful muscles driving the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to have Tyler draw the bow basically doing what we call a shoulder pull. What he's going to do is not engage his back. He's going to point the arrow straight at the target and pull straight away, just like 100% of us do before we've been trained differently. What you're not going to see is the scapular retraction. All that strain is going to come from mostly his shoulder, and, we're, and therefore he's not using these big, power, powerful muscles in his back. He's going to go ahead and shoot the shot. We've got a lighter bow because actually we don't want to put that strain on Tyler's shoulder by shooting incorrectly with that shoulder pull. So we grabbed a little 20 pound bow he can finish this shot with. And you'll see him slam to, the, slam to a stop. So we're hardly seeing any movement in the shoulder. Now we're gonna pull this way. Boom, ouch. How'd that feel, Tyler? A little tingly. A little tingly with a 20 Just pound bow. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. So he's got a big powerful shot and when he's driving tension in the wrong direction, he slams to the end of that range of motion and then the impingement we showed with those with the head of the humerus and the chromium yeah. process slams together. We impinge those tissues and we wouldn't want to do that too many times. No. Okay. So what we're going to do this first time is the incorrect method, the intuitive method, the one we all use before trained in the back tension. So Tyler's going to draw this bow straight back and that's going to be the direction of tension when he releases the arrow and you'll see the elbow slam to a stop. Straight back, the aim occurs, he applies tension, ouch. Had a yeah. little rotation. A little bit. But 
that didn't look like it felt good. No. Let's try that again. It's hard for Tyler to do it wrong now. He's really well trained. You used to do it all the time. Yeah, that's all. That's how I shot. Yeah. Straight direction that way comes to an anchor. There's his aim. Ouch. So he's got a short follow through position and that elbow slammed to a stop right there. That's what you see. It did not rotate through like we want to do it to keep that shoulder safe. Yeah. Now we've got Tyler's 52 pound hunting bow and now he can <laughs> shoot that bow without tearing your shoulders up in a correct manner. What you'll see is a draw that comes from the outside, settles in. We showed you that what's going on in the back. So we'll show it from this side. We'll see the rotation into this holding position. He'll apply, apply tension in the correct direction behind him. And you'll see that shot break. The follow through will slash through. His hand will stay in a linear fashion. will end up between basically his ear and the end of his shoulder. So the hand will stay linear. The shoulder will slash around. Those holding position, he settles into his back. Bam. Here we have the follow through position between the ear and the end of the shoulder. Elbow slash through the finished position. And it's a nice, smooth, you never hit a hard wall. Like. Right. So the head of that humerus, and we have that acromion process that just glenial humor rotation rotates through with no impingement. So those are, that wraps up my demonstration of what it looks like for back tension with the two bad results. One slams to a stop with incorrect direction of tension. One is good direction of tension, but a high shoulder to start with. Okay, so let's go to the other side. The other side is kind of common with men who work hard, women who work hard, athletes, is that if anything is coming from a down position to an up position, we engage these upper trapezius muscles. They're lifting muscles. So what you see in a lot of archers is they lift the bow up, up comes the shoulder, right? And what we want is that shoulder down and back as opposed to anything that's up or forward. So these are both very common things you see. You'll see a person rotate into good alignment when they try to align their shoulders, their chest in the overdrive, and up comes this shoulder. Or simply by lifting the bow up, they, they lift with the upper trap because it's kind of an enhancer to an up position, and up comes the shoulder. A drop, drawing the bow from a low position here, like drawing the bow while I'm raising, can also drive the shoulder up out of position. And so this is really detrimental because what we're doing, instead of the humerus sitting in the glenoid right like this, is that thing is coming up and it's stretching all this soft tissue here. And then we've got a bunch of weight going that way and then we further stretch all those tissues and it's, it's really a big strain to, the, to this front shoulder. And a lot of people get away with it for years. But I am a guy that shot before I knew better like this. It's just part of what I did. And to this day, this motion here is very difficult for me to do. It's a, so I've got damage in there that I don't even know what it is. So it's really critical that we keep those shoulders low and level. So even when I raise the bow, I'm going to come up here and then I'm going to come into my position. See, now that front shoulder's down, both shoulders are down, low and level. If I've got a problem with lifting the bow and lifting the shoulder up too, there's some things it's just the way you're thinking about it. Sometimes we'll push that shoulder down here at this position and like use a scooping motion. So sometimes it's just technique. It's just scoop that arm up and just learn to get in the mirror. Look in the mirror, push that shoulder down, scoop it up. We've got a low and level shoulder. That's what we want. Sometimes it's a matter of strength or when we lift the bow, the stress is going this way or lifting the shoulder up. So there is technique where we can engage the muscles that actually depress the shoulder, where we put a little twisting motion in there. Push the bow at the target line and give it a little twist and you'll feel these lat muscles engage. Those are the ones that are sucking that shoulder down. And we lift with that rotational tension and then proceed into our shot and finish it. So MTS provides for technique that literally engages the muscles to, to depress the shoulder. So a takeaway for both sides, both sides of your, of your body, your shoulders on both sides, is that we want to produce an archery shot from a position where both shoulders are low and level. Everything we're doing is building 
that position. Recurve or compound. That's the most stable place for your shoulders to be. They're with back tension uh, release. That thing's going to rotate through here. We're going to have those that that humerus rotate through the glenoid without an impingement that we'll show you about in a little bit. We're not going to stretch these tissues up. So low and level. It's an absolutely stable place to be. Your pin float's going to be reduced from these positions. It's more powerful. We're not giving up draw length. Look at the draw length I'm giving up with that high shoulder. And it's just a strong position overall. Even the way we draw the bow can cause a little bit of strain. If I close my stance up, if my front foot is ahead of my back foot, it'll put us in a position where we'll reach really far forward and then there's a long stroke back in here into holding. Well, that's a lot of sh shoulder stress right here. It's a lot of shoulder stress. So a lot of times we'll open the stance, we'll put that front foot maybe three inches behind the back foot to where we can come more like this. And then we have a just much more direct, we're not reached, we're not reached across like that closed stance puts me way up there with a big reach and a long way back. I'll open that stance and I'll just take this hand straight up like this and then come right into my positions. With a compound bow, we're, we, we got to do our business a little bit different. All the way that bow is way up in front and we got to crack it over to the let off. So we, there's some vulnerabilities to your shoulders but we got a new one to add. Vulnerability to your clavicles. This vulnerability here is caused here again from a high shoulder and then trying to crack this bow over from here and we impinge this clavicle and it can be a, a, AC or SC side. You can get really a bunch of pain over here at the sternum side or over here at the end. So what we want to do with a compound is we want to, when we twist our body, we're bracing, we're pulling the bow, we're bracing the bow. We also want to start from a little outside position so I can lead with the shoulder. I can get the stress of drawing that bow into my back. I'm going to retract my scapula by driving this shoulder back. So the draw on a, on a recurve is more we more pre-align our shoulders and come right into low. With a compound, we can't do that because all that weight's up in front. So we're going to come up here. We're going to gauge a little rotational tension, get that bow stuck down. We're going to come up and we're going to coil and lead with the shoulders to the draw at the same time. So it looks more like this. Boom right into your let off. So we're going to coil and draw the bow. Lead with the shoulder. So we have some power from separating our hands from the twisting motion. That's going to enhance your power. And then lead with the shoulder. Get the stress put in your back and off of your shoulder. We're going to have Eric draw the bow here in kind of a poor position first. Anytime the shoulders are high, it's going to be a much weaker, poorer position and make you more prone to injury. Got these shoulders up. Okay. So. We're going to have Eric draw from a much improved position. What you're going to see on Eric's draw that is great is he leads with the shoulder. So you'll see the scapular retraction. You'll watch this shoulder blade move about this much, probably about four inches of movement from up here to right here. Now he's using the big strong muscles in his back to draw the bow. Boom. Sets it in there. Let me further caution you. A lot of times we've got a wrist strap release, a caliber type release. A lot of guys will come up here and they'll kind of point the arrow straight at the target. And the man, even if they have some coiling motion, they come straight back with that draw. All that stress is going to the shoulder. So on either kind of recurve or compound, we kind of want to draw for a little more outside to inside. That arrow point left a little bit, that's fine. That arrow will come right to target as you draw. So we want to get this, this drawing hand maybe three inches outside the line of the bow and then lead with the shoulder. It's all technique driven. So we're going to lead with the shoulder as we coil and draw. We're going to lead in the shoulder right into the let off. Okay, so for a compound, remember that shoulder needs to be engaged down. It's a big risk for clavicle impingement when we start with that shoulder high because as we rotate through there in this, this high shoulder, we're really got a big chance of impinging this clavicle. I've seen, it's not a common injury, but when I see uh, an injury from clavicle impingement on either end of either clavicle, 
these things take forever to heal. There's not much blood that gets to that, those connections. So we're talking like eight months to a year and a half before the soreness comes back and we can shoot again. We had corrected a guy that, big strong strapping guy, bodybuilder, and that front shoulder was up when he was starting his draw. And then all that pressure, that shoulder came forward as he's pressing that bow in and it just smashed that clavicle together. And that guy took, took dang near a year and a half to be able to shoot again. So really the shoulder positions are extremely important to every part of the shot from the start of the draw right to the finish of the draw, right to the finish of the release. We did a, an immersion clinic. It was a three-day shooting clinic one time. And a young man showed up and he says, you know, my shoulder is so sore, I'm not going to be shooting. I thought about not coming, but I thought I'd come to watch. And so we got this guy aside. I'm like, can I uh, watch one of your shots and see what's going on in your shot? You know, we hadn't even really started the clinic yet. So we watch him shoot, and sure enough, he's got, he's trying to pull through a clicker, and he's pulling that way to get through that clicker, and he pull, makes that shot, bam, it slams to a shot, and the poor guy was like, oh, that just killed me. And he's like, okay, dude, I know what your problem is, but if you're going to learn, let's try a stretch band, I'll give you a proper technique anyway. So. First of all, we started with how he drew the bow. We got the stress off the shoulder. We got this strain out here about three inches so he can lead with the shoulder, take the strain off the shoulder, put in these big back muscles. So we got, the, got him to draw the bow properly, boom. And then we got him into correct direction of tension, which is this way, this way, not that way. So anyway, we started with a stretch band because man, this guy's hurting. Right? Yeah. So we get him in, we get him to draw the bow with more of his back muscles, get the strain off that sore shoulder. It's mm -hmm. hard to say. Say yeah. that five times in a row, right? Sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure, it's sure. Tough. <laughs> okay, anyways, we pull, we get that guy to lead with the shoulder, get that stress into the back muscles. We build a holding position and we got him into correct direction of tension behind him. And now let's leave a little room in here for a clicker. We shorten the clicker up with just a touch so that he could get through the clicker with rotational tension to a follow through. He's like, that did not hurt. And you're talking about a guy who's presently like has a he can't very shoot. sore shoulder, can't shoot. He is hurting so bad. He says, I came to watch, I can't shoot my bow. So we ran him through, you know, this stretch band a few times, got him into correct direction of tension, rotating through a follow through, set his yeah. bow up, shortened the clicker a little bit so he could get through the click with this kind of a motion. Yeah. And it's and it's it's such a common thing, like you see, because it's it, oh, it's fine. intuitive. So to pull, pull, you know, the target's that way, you pull the bow back that way. That's how I shot for years. That's how, and these injuries. 100% of us shoot like that yeah. with, if, unless trained otherwise. Yeah, and you know, you may see, you know, you see people that are trained in shooting like a, with a, a rotational draw, and you see what the follow through looks like, and you'll see people, and I used to, like, I was one of them. You try to mimic that, like, oh, well, that's what that follow through works, but you're still using the wrong muscles and still subjecting yourself to in, you know potential injury i mean i got you know oh better not shoot better take a little break from shooting because my shoulder's getting sore yeah or you know and actually actual joint soreness not just muscle soreness from being out of shape um, right you know and and one thing i you know i noticed too is if i'm if i'm too far forward drawing the bow i get you know i almost immediately right. it starts it starts hurting right there and if i do it very much it hurts really bad yeah if i if i if I run my shot using, you, you know, if, if I'm putting too much torque in a certain way, uh, you know, that, that interrupts that smooth, um, mm -hmm. that smooth follow through, you know, I, I, like I hurt my shoulder last summer. It, was, it wasn't bad, but I noticed it immediately. And I, you know, I took a day off and then kind of reworked to figure out what I did wrong. And then I was fine. Which you brings know. up a point, if something's hurting, you need to change yeah. something. Get off of whatever pressure is causing yeah. repetitive motion strain, and because we don't want to turn it into repetitive motion injury. Because a lot of people, it, it turns into long-term stuff that makes them not be able to even shoot a bow anymore. Yeah, yeah it's true. You it know? ends up in a surgery sometimes. You know, so and everybody's built different. Some people it may not affect, or you know, a lot of people that just shoot really lightweight bows, you could see, you know, you can see an impingement that they have. They may be able to do that for years before. It, it really starts hurting them. Age, um, but some of them, you know, loss of muscle tone, and all of a sudden that shows up big time. Yeah. But back to that guy. We got him on his bow. We got him to draw the bow from a better position. Get the strain into the back and off the shoulder. Get him to get good direction tension. Get him this follow through. 
He shot the whole clinic. He shot 400 arrows without a lick of pain. Yeah. It was a testament to technique and, you know, what NTS teaches for injury avoidance. Yeah. And, and yeah, just some of these basics, you know, these simple principles like keeping your, keeping your shoulders down and, and learning what real, like what really, what using back tension is. You know, everyone says back tension, but a lot of people don't understand what it really is and what it mm -hmm. feels like. You know, they just try to have a shot that looks like what someone with back tension shoots. But that's a pretty shot. It is. It's a and, very and good. And you know what? It, it looks cool. You see these guys come in here in such smooth movement. They settle in here. You see this beautiful falzer, and it looks cool. It does. And we want to look cool. Yeah, and we, we do. And, and, you know, you see a clean, you, you're trying to clean up your release. All these things like I could, before I learned how to do it, I thought I was shooting with back tension. You know, until he educated me otherwise about three years ago. <laughs> Brutally so. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I had a funky release because I was trying for that good, clean release looking. Just but pushing tension in the uh, wrong direction, just pushing it that way, which is intuitive. Yeah. I said, you know, that's counterintuitive to push pressure that way. You know, and it may, you know, and you may, you may be able to shoot really well, but, you know, pr for the yeah, long term, pre preserving your shoulders and, and preventing injury, you know, there's a big difference between, you know, muscle soreness like I kind of mentioned earlier, an actual injury pain. Yeah. And injury pain, like you should not experience injury pain, you know. You may, be, you may not be able to shoot 400 arrows in a day just due to, you know, like I, I couldn't, yeah, I'd be, just, my no. arms would fall off right now. Just it's like when you start fatigue. weightlifting, you only do something. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. fatigue would make me do things that aren't right. But, you know, assuming you're, you know, your muscles are conditioned enough to do it, you ought to be able to shoot 500 shots a day with no shoulder pain. You know, yeah, eventually, if yeah. you're shooting, if you're, you know, if you're shooting, you, you know, 30, if that. you're shooting 30, 50 shots or whatever a day and, and you're quitting because your shoulder's getting sore, that's a red flag. Yeah. Do, doing something wrong. And, you need uh, to get some coaching for sure. And, you know, I, you know, it's worth, I do it a lot myself, but it's worth, you know, looking at the way you shoot and kind of evaluating whether or not you're at risk for, at risk for some of these injuries because it, it does end people's, people's in the, in the archery career. careers. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the whole point of all of this is that you know we want we want you to continue to be able to shoot a bow without getting injured for decades to come. It's a lifelong type sport, and uh, you know even even if a couple people watch this and, and change how they're shooting to just avoid injury, you know you don't have to be the best shooter out there. We're not trying to make you the best shooter out there, but if uh, you know just doing it in a safe manner, it really it really helped me. Uh, it eliminated a lot of problems for me, and uh, you know, if you if you want to learn more into into the system that Tom teaches, and in which you know I would recommend, I did, and I really I really like it. Um, he has a, an online course called Solid Archery Mechanics, which breaks it down the whole process down detail by detail. Um, it, it's made me a better shooter. You know, it, it, you know, it might not be for everybody, but the elements that prevent injury, I think everybody should be able to, should utilize in some way. And his, in his course, Solid Archery Mechanics is available at... At rmsgear.com. rmsgear.com. Shoot shootsolid.com, but rmsgear.com, our main website page, has a link to, to buy the course. Yeah, you can, you, you can buy the course and then you have lifetime access to it.